Mr. Wright has told me a lot about your potential as a lawyer, Miss Sykes. Do you see that a threat looms in the shadows, Mr. Wright? Is this what I get for being confident and happy to give this trial a shot? Hold it! Prosecutor Edgeworth forgot to include an important detail. We suspect him of attempting to rob the register. However, he never got away with any money. The defendant, Waki Kataki, is clearly suffering from stress and anxiety. People are walking out of my life left and right, and I don't know... I don't know what I'm doing anymore! The court will now reconvene with the trial of Walkie Kitaki. Defense? I presume you had a word with your client about his... attitude? Yes, we did, Your Honor. I believe we now have a mutual understanding. Ah, yes. Good. I'm glad that common ground could be reached on this subject. We're eager to defend him. Trucy, not so eager. What? You don't trust me, Thena? However, we have a trial to resume. Mr. Edgeworth, your next witness, if you would. Certainly. Your name, Miss... Nim is Olga Orly. I am Vitris for Borstbow Club. Very good. And you were the one who was struck that night, correct? Da. Do I do the testify now? It would be greatly appreciated, that's for sure. Okay. Olga can do this. I was in front of the bar, tending to dirty dishes. That is when it happened. Defendant man came in with gun. He asked for money, but I could not open the register. I tried to call police, but he hit me before I could. Then he take money from register and left. Hmm. Quite the traumatic experience you went through, Ms. O'Reilly. Duh, I am still recovering from crime. The defense will commence the cross-examination, but do be gentle, as this woman is still recovering. Uh, yes, Your Honor. What time was this? It was after closing time. 9.30? I see. Please continue. Hold it! It seems as though you may have done the right thing. I'd never give away the money. Well, I don't know if we can trust you. Whoa, whoa, hold on a moment here, Miss Sykes. Yes. Would you stop harassing the witness, Miss Sykes? My bad. <laughs> I can't lose my cool. I have to remain in control. Objection! Miss Orly, please remember that you are under oath. Da, Olga remembers this. Well, you seem to have forgotten the no lying part. Huh? What do you mean? Let's refer to Detective Skye's testimony. She said, and I quote, We suspect him of attempting to rob the register. However, he never got away with any money. 
This means that the defendant didn't touch a dime in your register. Oh! I would like an explanation, Miss Orly. No, no, money was missing from register when I checked. That isn't good enough of an explanation, Miss Orly. You claim he stole money from your register when he never got his hands on it. Why is that it's not true? Evidence talks, Miss Sykes. Show the court some evidence that would back up your claim. There's no need to, Prosecutor Edgeworth. It's assumed as part of the forensic investigation that the register was examined. Detective Skye even testified as much while under oath. Well, I... Ugh. That is a fair point. The witness would have a hard time claiming the detective wasn't thorough, might I add. Ms. Orly, you don't know Detective Sky personally, do you? Ugh. Well, then I'm not having your excuses. Don't you try and discredit this city's police department. And why do you presume Miss Orly is lying about the defendant stealing money from the register? I'm glad you asked. It's quite simple, really. It's be because, you know, uh... You may be fresh off the bar, Miss Sykes, but I will not tolerate this kind of desperation from any attorney. Do you understand? E yes, Your Honor. Athena, you need to take a deep breath and ease up. I'm serious. Okay, I see that. Unless we wish for this trial to go on all day, I think it's best we progress on target. Well, that about wraps things up for me, in fact. I'm ready to deliver a verdict for the defendant. This attorney is out to get Olga. The boy did crime. I wish Daddy could help us. Me too, Trucy. Is this the end? Already? You know, for a stubborn gal, I did pretty well to get this far in the trial. I just feel like I can't defeat Edgeworth no matter what. He's incredibly experienced and I'm the opposite of that. If I'm doing okay, I still psych myself out anyways. I'm too emotional for law. No, I'm just stupid. Wait. Psych. That's it! Miss Orly! <laughs> Your Honor, I have an interesting proposal for the court. And what might that be, Miss Sykes? A therapy session with the witness Olga Orly. You can't be serious! <laughs> Widget, be quiet! What was that? You have some nerve, Miss Sykes. What exactly are you requesting? It's very clear to me that Miss Orly has something to hide, and I can hear the discord in her voice when she speaks. She needs to be able to open up and tell the court what she knows. It must be something integral to the case. I would sure hope so, considering you're requesting to play psychologist during a courtroom trial. This may be one of the most asinine proposals I've ever heard. Uh, I don't want to talk. Witness, wasn't you who spoke just now? Uh... Your Honor, I can use the mood matrix to deduce how the witness is feeling. I can detect any odd or unusual emotions for the situation. Please, I know this is unusual, but I promised a certain friend I'd bring psychology to the courtroom. I suppose, although this really is quite unusual, Mr. Edgeworth? <sighs> I thought I'd seen it all as a prosecutor, but ever since I've been ranked as chief prosecutor, I've missed out on the new courtroom shenanigans. Let's see what you can pull off, Sykes. Oh no. You have nothing to be worried about, Miss Orly. Everything's gonna be okay. I just need you to tell me about what's going on at the Borscht Bowl Club. All right, then. I feel.
Well, did you find anything? Yeah, ich denke das. Ms. Orly, it seems that you are very tense. I was wondering if you could clarify some things for me. Would that be all right? I guess so. What do you mean when you say the club has lots of activities? Well, lots of poker and lots of card games played. There's drinking, too. Must be a pretty hip location for young folks. What kind of restaurant is this exactly? You won't be in trouble for telling us the truth here, Miss Orly. Please, tell me why you feel sad about the activities going on. It makes me sad because they do not include me. No one talks to Olga. I work there and that's all there is. Okay, that makes sense. Well, you're being responsible and that's great. And what does the witness's emotions have to do with anything? Uh, yes. Let's keep going. Ms. Orly, you appear to be feeling happy from the alleged attempt of theft. Why is that? You were attacked by someone who allegedly attempted to steal from the restaurant you worked at. You can detect emotions with that device of yours? Truly fascinating. The defense has the floor, Prosecutor Edgeworth. I don't like the restaurant. My boss don't treat me well and the place is very bad. Very bad. Scummy place. You know, I never did get the best of vibes from that place when we investigated there. That doesn't explain why you'd be happy for the place to be robbed. OBJECTION! Perhaps expecting the highest of moral codes from this witness isn't a point of interest. What of it? There could be something bothering the witness. <clears throat> what is it, Trucy? I'm concentrating on Miss Orly. I'm noticing a lot of unease. That's right. You have a great sense for these things. I'm similar to your gadget thingy, but I don't have a gadget for this. No need to rub it in. Well, would you please elaborate to the court, Miss Sykes? Ms. Orly, why are you feeling so happy to be sharing this with us? Duh, there is some man. This guy. <gasps> She's starting to crack. If I can probe what it is that's causing her fright, this can open the case back up. Ms. Orly, why were you feeling surprised about this guy just now? What's this all about? I don't know him very well, but he comes to the club sometimes. This must be someone of status. He gets lots of people to come to the club. Big tip night for me. Do you know their name? Uh, it was something like Vimperson. Doesn't ring any bells. He lets everyone get away with the gambling. It's crazy there. I speechless and in awe when he comes. So that's why you were so surprised. This outsider can control the club. I'm growing more and more concerned about this restaurant. Witness, these are serious claims. Duh, this man in pocket of club owner. Of course. Man intimidates. He, he's scary. <laughs> No, no, stay calm, Miss Orly. Everything's fine now. I can't work there. No more. No more. Uh, witness, are, are you all right? What is this? Oh, okay. Ah! Ah! D 
Did I overdo it? Can we get some medical attention for this woman, please? I don't need no stinking medical attention, boy. Uh, excuse me? I don't need your freaking docs, and I don't need help. I can handle myself. I'm feeling a lot better after that matrix therapy, or whatever it was called. Uh, yeah, I can speak English. The Russian broad thing was just to keep me undercover. And what is that supposed to mean? It seems that even Mr. Edgeworth had no idea about this. I've been trying to get the scoop of a lifetime on that stupid restaurant. They do illegal gambling at that dump. I've been stocking up photos and keeping a journal so I could bust it wide open. G gambling The whole shebang. Poker, money, blackjack, whatever you want to blow your cash on, it's there. That Wimperson fella is just the tip of the iceberg, man. But that's beside the point. I have definitive proof that this gangster did it. D definitive That's right. I took a photo of the damn kid taking money from the register. Wait, what? Look, I have it right here. It totally was that kid. There's solid proof. How dare you, lady? What are all these accusations about anyway? Why is it that nothing ever goes smoothly with this job? And you felt no need to present this evidence outright? It was crucial information! I was saving it as a secret weapon. I'll spill all the beans right here, right now. Oh, I don't like this girl. Yeah, she tried to completely hide herself from the court. No, it's not just that. Huh? Apollo explained this to me. If a witness brings up an awkward story that could be relevant to the case, it probably is relevant. Oh, right! She tried to steer the conversation away toward exposing the restaurant's shadiness before realizing that was a bad idea. At least, that's gotta be part of it. Witness, the court is eager to hear testimony relating to this photograph. Please provide said testimony. I'd be more than happy to, of course. Mine better. Number one, just look at the footage. Who else has a coat that gaudy and dumb? Number two, I took a photo without him noticing. You can see him taking the cash out of the register plain as day. Then he hit me over the head after he grabbed the money. I don't remember Jack after that. See? Just cuff the kid already. You're making it too complicated. And then we can talk about that scummy place with all its junky business. I'm not giving up on Walkie just yet. We're seeing this through to the end. Man, you redheads are always so difficult. Excuse me? I beg your pardon, but need I remind you to behave civilly in a court of law? Gaudy and dumb coat could be available at any number of stores. I've never seen one before. Have you? I think I'd remember seeing a tacky little thing like that. Hmm. I don't want to admit it, but she's right. A hideous thing like that would burn holes into my memory. Objection! Miss Orly, I've had enough with your lies. Are you calling me a liar, girl? Well, I certainly ain't calling you a truther. There's something about this photo you gave that's clued me in on something. Huh? What? What about it? This is what bugs me about your photo. Take that! If we all take a closer look here, we can see something just under Walkie's coat. Ah, yes. I do believe I see it. It's the defendant's jacket, correct? Not exactly, Your Honor. 
I believe what Miss Sykes is referring to is the object sticking out of the jacket's chest pocket. Precisely. No, there's something hiding there. Do you know what this strange object may be, Miss Sykes? Actually, yes, I do. This is the object inside of the coat. Take that! What is that little thing? A graduation cap tassel from a certain someone's freshman year spare cap. And what is that supposed to mean? This tassel belongs to none other than university student Wesley Stickler. Are you claiming that this man in the picture... Is not the defendant at all? Yes. Oh, I look forward to seeing you explain this one, Sykes. No, but I... The coat... The, the hair... The, I was... Wrong? With all due respect, can't you see how the witness is terrified? But the notion is illogical. This court will not have it. Well, why don't you give me a chance to explain? Objection! Your desperate claim goes deeper than the Mariana Trench! Um, uh... Athena, I don't know what you're doing, but if you're going to try some magic trick, you should consult me first! Trucy, I... I think I have an idea. Miss Orly is reacting so emotionally to my stupid and impulse claim, then there has to be something she's hiding. What Apollo said to Trucy. Miss Sykes, you owe me a thorough explanation here. The person depicted in this photo clearly resembles the defendant. While the person depicted in the photo is wearing the iconic Kataki coat, the cap tassel hanging out of the pocket suggests two possible scenarios. One being that Walkie stole the tassel from Wesley during the crime, and the other being that Wesley stole Walkie's coat. Both theories suggest that this third party, Wesley Stickler, was at the club late into the night. Ah! This cannot be! I may be fired up, but you haven't seen nothing yet. What are you trying to say, miss? I'm saying that the defense and prosecution has underestimated the details of the case. All thanks to your illegal withholding of evidence, of course. This brings several questions to light. I declare that we now... I apologize, Your Honor. I'm here on behalf of the Los Angeles Police Department, formally requesting that Prosecutor Edgeworth is dismissed from this trial immediately. What in Lady Justice's name is this? I beg your pardon? There's an arrest taking place at the prosecutor's office, and the authorities want you to be there for proceedings. Well, this is unheard of. Wait, is this a good thing for Waki and I? Well then, this is highly unusual, but what say you, Your Honor? Chief Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, if what Detective Sky says is true, then I shall dismiss you from this case. Leave your files on the desk. How will this be a fair trial? Miss Sykes? I'm prepared, don't worry. I have all of the information needed from the Chief of Police. We have a prosecutor who left his office about 10 minutes ago and is on his way to stand in. It's been approved, Edgeworth. I hope you're... proud of me. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. Such a suck-up to that guy. And Trucy. I suppose I'll just... walk away then. I can only imagine what Boss is thinking right now. Yeah. What if this is about something he's involved in? Right. Well, it appears that we will need another quick recess as we wait for the prosecutor to arrive. OBJECTION! The underrated Rookie Humiliator is here to officially represent Miles Edgeworth. Winston Payne? You're filling in for Chief Prosecutor Edgeworth? Who is this punk? No, no, no. It is I, Gaspin Payne. The one with more courtroom vigor, if you'd be obliged to say. Ho, ho. Anyways, I have Mr. Edgeworth's files here on this fine desk, so I definitely have all the evidence I need to make sure this gangster gets off the streets for good. OBJECTION! Don't get me riled up, Mr. Payne. I've about had it today. Ooh, you're a spicy one, aren't you? Is he trying to hit on you, Thena? This outrageous behavior must end now, Prosecutor Payne. 
I will not tolerate such insolent remarks. S sorry, Your Honor. I uh, won't cross that line again. Please believe me. What's important now is that we bring our perpetrator to light. If we consider the evidence brought to light so far, my next request should make sense to the court. I request that Wesley Stickler be brought to the stand. So I see. Any objections, prosecution? Not a problem. This bumblebee rookie is about to embarrass herself. It'll be splendid. Very well. Bailiff, please fetch Mr. Wesley Stickler this instant. Am I needed so soon? I would have figured it would take longer to get anywhere. Don't get so comfortable yet, Mr. Stickler. Do you know why you've been called to the stand so early? To give testimony about the crime, I presume? Not quite. You're being brought here on the accusation of assault and theft. I excuse me? How preposterous can you be? That's right, Mr. Stickler. The defense is formally accusing you of attempting to rob the Borscht Bull Club as well as striking Miss Orley. That seems like a leap in logic. I can see that the chief prosecutor left some pointers. I don't see how you can accuse Wesley of being the culprit. Oh, some photo you got from the wagers. How do you know it wasn't fabricated? Oh, you little rat! Really? That's what you expect of me? Let's get back on track. J you have some nerve to treat me like this, woman. I thought I explained to you earlier the meaning of respect. Respect for a scholar, respect for a witness, a key to the heart and mind- OBJECTION! Nope, we aren't doing that rambling thing today, okay? Mr. Stickler, you are ought to testify about that night. Do you understand? D do I understand? I- I- uh, Yes. Yes, I fully understand. I will gladly give testimony. Please proceed, Mr. Stickler. I cannot believe you would accuse me of such an act. After all, I am an honor roll student at Ivy League. I am telling you, I went there, partook in one of the most delightful bowls of borscht I have ever eaten, and then witnessed the crime. So simple. I saw that boy strike our fair lady over the head with his pistol. Besides, we don't even look the same. He has an excellent point. Mr. Stickler looks nothing like the defendant. It's a glaring contradiction. Even a blind man could see that. We'll see who's blind in a minute. Hold it! Mr. Stickler, what exactly is the name of your school? The Kitsune Ivy League School, home of the Fighting Fox Tales. Ha! Just as I thought. That explains why there was a fox beanie hat at the crime scene. There's just no way Waki would have left something so obviously important to him there. You must really like your school, huh? Well, perhaps I do, but perhaps I do not. For whoever could know of such an opinion, some may speak of objectivity, while others speak of subjectivity. The point is not to be right, but to be left. To be left beside the commonalities of- I admit that I am unable to follow the defense's current line of logic. However, this irrelevant discourse is bringing this trial to a halt, witness. I expect more from someone so educated. My dearest and most sympathetic apologies, Air uh, Judge. Hey, German is my thing. Gosh darn it. You don't own the language, and I don't own magic. That's enough whispering over there, ladies. Back to the testimony. I can't believe I'm saying this, but thank you, Mr. Payne. Hold it! Did you notice anything about the pistol? Oh, good heavens! It had such detail! A 
carved crest of sorts, like the kind you'd find in a fine woodworking shop, uh, but for a pistol. That will be all on that statement, then. What a fool. He's not smart in any of the ways that really count. How would he have known about Waki's special pistol if he didn't engage in the crime? Objection! Mr. Stickler, what was the name of your school again? <laughs> so forgetful, are we? The Kitsune Ivy League School. As I thought. Would this perhaps be your mascot, Freddy the Fighting Fox? Yes, indeed. That hat is sold in our... Uh, uh, Got him. You seem nervous, Mr. Stickler. There's an awful lot of discourse in that voice of yours. Objection! Miss Sykes, if you could stop harassing our witness for a moment and explain the significance of this hat, that'd be great. Of course, Mr. Payne. It'd be my pleasure. As we saw in the photo previously, aside from the tassel sticking out of the coat, the perpetrator in the picture appeared to be Waki Kataki. However, if you look closely at the fighting foxtail's hat, you can see that it is exactly the same shape as Waki's haircut. Yeah, who's to say it isn't the hat pulling a magic trick? Oh, magic! Yes, that is definitely the answer. Could this involve forensics as well? I'll show you Mr. Hat as a compromise. Oh, right. The trial. Seriously, get a grip, girls. Defense, do you truly propose that one could presumptuously yet conclusively reveal me wearing that hat? Objection! We'll need to see conclusive evidence, Bumblebee. Ah, your honor? They have a point, Miss Sykes. So I am formally asking you to present conclusive evidence that reveals the suspect in the photo to be Wesley Stickler. Don't be distracted. Focus on the details. I'm trying to remember what Boss has told me. I have evidence, Your Honor. Take that! The defendant's pistol? You are aware that the police found Mr. Kataki's fingerprints on them, correct? Yes, but hear me out. As Detective Sky told me, this pistol has the special crest of the Kataki mob family engraved into it. The Kataki family has a special crest. Every weapon they own has this crest as well as the owner's initials engraved into the grip. Lo and behold, both the crest and his initials are right on the side. It's near impossible to forge this, seeing as no one knows who crafts the guns. When considering the police's knowledge of how protective Waki's parents are with the family's special belongings, the fact that Wesley knows about this seems rather suspicious to me. And what's more, it's almost as if a graduation cap was found at the scene of the crime among tables that were in disarray. You add all this together, and you have a guilty suspect. No! Objection! And how can you prove Mr. Stickler even wore it? You have no evidence to suggest he even purchased this hat at all, rookie. Objection! Well, there's one way to prove it for sure, no? A and what might that be? The inside of the hat, of course. Inside? Of the... Hat? Exactly. If what I assert is true, then Mr. Stickler's hairs should still be on the inside of this hat. DNA proof. Objection! Everyone knows that hair DNA isn't very reliable data. Of course I wouldn't expect anything accurate from the likes of you. I am not bluffing, though. Why don't we just test it and find out? <clears throat> Order in the court! Detective Sky, I want that hat tested for Mr. Stickler's DNA immediately! No! You cannot commit such an atrocity against my might! You got it, Your Honor! Well? I gotta say, you've got guts, kid. We found hair samples in there, alright. 
and it has Stickler's name written all over it. The information we gather from these samples is surprisingly conclusive, and I think I know why this fellow always wears a graduation cap. And there you have it. Enough proof to show that the real culprit is... Stop! I cannot go along with this farce any longer! H huh? What I'm saying is, there was a crucial hole in your logic. What might that be? Two things. One, a motive. What would I need with such money from such a petty cash register? And two, what weapon would I have used? My fingerprints aren't even on the pistol, you lunatic! Ah! I... You have a point. I purchased that hat before I attended a football game a fortnight ago. It was an example of school spirit, nothing more. Can you blame an honor roll student for showing pride in his studies and in his peers? That can't be it, huh? Just think for a minute. He's our man. We just need to think a little harder. What am I missing? Our witness has proposed an interesting problem. We are lacking a weapon with his prints that was used during the assault. Defense? It would appear as though this falls on you. I won't let this trial continue unless you present a weapon. Okay, Athena. Our whole case rides on this next piece of evidence. Think. We have to have it here somewhere. Right. What is the weapon Mr. Stickler used to strike Miss O'Reilly? A bottle of grape juice? At first, when I discovered this bottle, I felt it had no meaning. The one thing that tipped me off was the lack of glass shards around where I found it. However, I am 100% sure that this is the weapon Wesley Stickler used to bludgeon Miss Orly. <laughs> My question is where were the shards have gone? If Miss Ori were to get hit on the head with a bottle like that, there would have been shards left behind. That bothered me too. And then I realized where I found this bottle in the first place. Uh-oh. <laughs> no. Stop it, woman. All you have to do is observe your surroundings. Here is the location of where the shards are hidden. Take that! The fireplace? Precisely. He planted the bottle amongst the others and then threw the shards away. Isn't that right, Mr. Stickler? Good heavens! This is... this is insanity! Objection! I may not fully understand what is going on with this case, or that is what I would say if I didn't have an objection. What is your objection, Mr. Payne? The motive. What could possibly link the witness to what money so badly? So much so that he assaulted a worker at the restaurant. Trucy, I may be cut out for this work after all. You had a light bulb go off in your head too? The police haven't commented yet on a motive for the defense's accused party. Uh, it wasn't me, man! Please, believe in me! Walkie, hang in there, bud. I believe in you now! Please, help me! This has gone on far enough. Miss Sykes, please explain to the court what would possibly motivate the witness to commit the crime. Time to get thinking. So if we think about how the assault on Miss Orley occurred, we have to remember that the murder weapon is not the blunt end of a pistol as we first thought. We know that the weapon used in the assault was the... Ms. Orley was attacked with the bottle, which means that Stickler's fingerprints could possibly exist on the broken shards at the crime scene. Walkie's fingerprints on his pistol doesn't need further explanation, but why was the gun left there in the first place? Yes! Walkie must have had a heated argument with Wesley prior to the crime occurring. Due to either a mad dash out of the restaurant or out of fear, Walkie must have dropped the pistol on the way out. It's the only way he'd leave something so valuable to his family behind. Why did Wesley engage with Walkie at the restaurant that night? <laughs> the 
This must be when Wesley tried to steal his jacket, so that he could disguise himself as an iconic gangster and hide away from the crime as he committed it. Everything is leading to Walkie's innocence and Wesley's fall, but why did he do it? Why did he go through the trouble of pretending to be Walkie and steal money from the register? Oh, the key! The key is in a certain piece of evidence. This ties it all together. Wesley Stickler is desperate to obtain any money he can get his hands on, even if it means falling short of his prestigious personality. This is the final nail in the coffin. Now to drive it home. Your Honor, it's actually very simple to explain. Oh, is that so, milady? Well, do tell. Do tell us what you have in mind. I'd be honored to. A scholar such as yourself ought to know when the price for incompetence is really high. Oh! Oh, heavens, I... No! What is the meaning of this defense? I'll enlighten you all as to what I'm referring to. Wesley Stickler's motivation for assaulting the victim and attempted robbery all stem from his expensive education. What? It makes so much sense! Go on! I'd wager that there's a high probability that Mr. Stickler is currently experiencing immense pressure with a lot of student loan debt. It's an unfortunate situation that many collegiate programs come with, a high price. I can tell you as much that one of the reasons I studied law in Europe was to avoid high amounts of debt. <sighs> You are so desperate to pay back these loans, so desperate to where you were angry. Angry at the lady who wouldn't give the restaurant's earned money to you. All for what? All for you to then hit her with that bottle of grape juice. It's despicable and disgraceful. A farce. Such a farce. Objection! Then tell us, rookie. Tell us how the broken bottle and its contaminants ended up by the piano outside when the victim says she was stuck at the register inside. Objection! It's so simple, Prosecutor Payne. Look beyond Prosecutor Edgeworth's documents and think for a moment. We can have forensics down there right now and tell you that the fingerprints belonging to Wesley can be found on that bottle. I'm sure of it. Bluff or not, we have to look beyond the evidence here. That bottle could have easily been rearranged by Wesley himself to be outside. No! If I had more information, I, I could say... Uh, ah! It's time to put an end to this charade. Wesley Stickler, your days of hypocrisy and pedagogy are dismissed. <laughs> no, no, halt, halt, I say, uh, I said, uh, 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 stop! <laughs> you, you don't know what it's like. Hmm? Having to pay tuition for that school. It costs an arm and a leg. I, I I couldn't pay for it anymore. I I was getting desperate. I I had to I had to think of something. I I couldn't disappoint my family again. But why pin it on Mr. Kitaki? It's not like he had anything to do with this. He was a famous gangster. If I pinned it on him, then I wouldn't be suspected. He would gladly take the fall for me just for the street cred. I I, I didn't think logically. I... And then the restaurant. It's nothing but a scandalous mess. I know it is wrong, but I, I wanted to see that establishment go down. The illegal activities. I didn't consider that to be a factor. It's such a travesty. Such a travesty. I think you can leave it at that. You didn't think, and that's how you got caught up in all of this in the first place. Yes, 
milady. Well, I can safely say that was one of the most impressive turnabouts I have seen in quite some time. You two should be proud of yourselves. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm not a rookie humiliator after all. Fine then, I'll make my return someday. I'll be the new Edgeworth. Haha, <laughs> we shall see. Ich möchte das sehen. You did it! I... I mean, seriously, you actually pulled this off! A great start to your career! Well, I couldn't have done it alone. Wesley Stickler is currently being placed under arrest and charged for assault and attempted robbery. I feel so relieved. And, as if I needed to say this, I will now hand down my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Walkie Kitaki. Court is adjourned. Ah, <sighs> so relieving. I think a celebration is in order. Not only for you, but for Waki too. Heck yeah, and we can invite Boss and Apollo as well. Widget, will you just... <laughs> it's okay. Wow, you two. I'm very impressed. Quite the solid turnabout you had there. Indeed. Most impressive. I'd say you have quite the prodigies in your care, right? I'd have to agree. Aw, guys. You're shaping up to be a stellar attorney, Athena. You just need to remember to keep a cool head and try not to get so down in the dumps. That's so much easier said than done. But he's right. Those are the two biggest things holding me back right now. And him. Oh, uh, hey, Waki. Listen, I... I wanted to apologize for the way I acted before. I really do appreciate you guys getting me out of this. I... I realize I was more than rude to you girls, especially when all you were trying to do was help me. If there's anything I could ever do for you, please, let me know. Anytime, Waki. I think it's time to let go, help my family move out of the mob. Clean money. It's where it's at, you know? It's gotta be a healthier way to live. Listen, I wish I told you what I remembered, but it honestly wasn't much. I did think about stealing from that restaurant. I just wasn't ready for my family to go clean yet. Look, Waki, change can be scary, but this is a very good change. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Sykes. Well, see you both at home. Kristoff and I are going to go grab dinner before we head back to the office, so there's no need to wait for us. Oh, all right. Catch you later, boss. Wait, why tonight? I celebrated Zach Grammary's return to the public, but tonight, Kristoff and I are going to reflect on the trial that happened a while back. I defended Zach in a high-profile court case, after all. Oh my. Well, see you later, boss. Thank you, Athena. Take care and relax tonight. It's time to get on with that celebration. We'll need to catch Walkie before he leaves the courthouse. Mm-hmm. Let's go!
Thank you.